think I'm gonna remember that. <laughs> Indian Motorcycle flew me out to Arizona to ride the new 2022 Indian Chief. And in my case, again. But this time they sent me out to ride this motorcycle with other YouTubers such as Jess from Her Two Wheels, Blockhead Moto, and skilled journalists from multiple publications in the mountains of Jerome, Sedona, and the beautiful National Forest of Prescott, all while carving pegs along with camping in the ghost town of Vulture City. But don't just watch my take on all of this. Be sure not to miss everyone else's experience from this ride, including Marvel Kid 87, Blockhead Moto, Kill Switch Queen, Her Two Wheels, and of course, Bo from Chase on Two Wheels and the various publications that also attended. I'll leave a link down below to everyone's channels. But the main focus here is on how Chief made me feel over this two day period I had of riding with different setups and configurations on Chief, Chief Bobber, and Super Chief. This is about the whole experience and story of riding Chief versus just a review alone. How I felt getting on the Chief for this time in Arizona, riding it through cold and twisty environments, 7,000 feet of an elevation change, how it felt after a long day of riding on that seat to rest and fellowship with new friends and do it all over again the next day. That's what this is about, the story. Now, as I mentioned before, my dimensions are a height of five feet, 10 inches, 28 inch inseam and a weight of around 170 pounds. But over the two day period, I split my time between Chief Barber Dark Horse with different handlebar setups, including the eight inch mini apes, the five inch mid risers, and Chief Dark Horse with drag bars and the cruiser bar setup on the Super Chief Limited. And I also spent all of my time on the 116 power plant with the four controls on the bobber and the floorboards on the Super Chief Limited. I decided to skip riding with the mid controls since I spent some time with those already and because I personally prefer four controls more as a rider. I also skipped riding with the 111 as I figured most of you wanted to know about the 116 in the Chief's frame, although the 111 is also a perfect option. But again, the goal here is to tell the story of everything I experienced and highlighting points, both good and bad along the way. But you can expect a second full breakdown from me on Chief later this week, so stay tuned for that. I'm stationed as much as you should be. Is that real? But after making the long trip to get to Sedona, Arizona, with views in every single direction, I got to the hotel and I saw plenty of chiefs sitting out front. And I made my way to my hotel room. I made it to Arizona, folks. And I was greeted by the itinerary from Indian, including a folder of different press materials. And to take a breather, I later caught up and met up with other people that were already there. Got Marvel Kid. And then I have someone else behind For me. some reason, my footage got go. corrupt. Oh, me? There's block. Oh, well. Nah. <laughs> later on, I went back to read up on the material Indian left for us in our hotel rooms before we had our press meeting and dinner later on. My next day, it started early at 6.20 a.m. as I prepared for the ride towards Jerome and Prescott Valley. And I have to add context here that I had good intentions to dress warm with the base and a mid layer under my Revit jacket and my St. Denim Dyneema jeans. TCX air boots and summer gloves weren't ideal, but I had no choice but to run with them. And also I had my signature Bell Bullet with the Cardo Pat Talk Bold and my Velomaki backpack carrying all of my camera gear. And I was ready to get this ride underway, fully aware that we would be crushing miles in several different weather conditions. And I was greeted by the Chief Bobber as my designated bike with the 116 power plant. And immediately, <laughs> I noticed the higher eight inch mini apes that weren't standard on the Chief Bobber, considering my height at five feet, 10 inches. And the stock handlebars are the five inch mid risers for the Chief Bobber. But this chief spec also had the ride command infotainment that allows changing power modes, along with features like weather, turn by turn navigation, with multiple ways to view information about the chief and overall ride. But along with me on this ride, we had Jess from Her Two Wheels. She was on a Super Chief Limited with the 116, which she calls Grandpa, with blockhead on the chief with standard bars and a 116. 
Once we geared up, we were ready to ride and I started checking out the friction zone on this specific Chief Bobber. The clutch feel, it didn't feel too heavy and the friction zone wasn't too far out. But the stage one exhaust on this setup gave a nice throaty note along with the nice induction noises from the stage one high flow air filter that was also installed. But once we got moving, we began to make our way south outside of Sedona to Jerome with the ultimate goal of reaching the Vultra City ghost town for the day. And the beginning of our route included many, many open windy roads, which were noticeable on the 116 Chief Bobber, considering I had no wind protection. And Blockhead was following me close from behind and I'm sure he was feeling some of that as well. Jess, on the other hand, was riding in comfort on Grandpa. But the views on this stint of the ride were beautiful and I constantly found myself just taking it all in. Realizing I really was here, riding on an Indian across the country with new friends along with seeing other power sport enthusiasts out enjoying their own off-road vehicles. But up until this point, we had mostly straight roads. But then we arrived to a series of roundabout turns and this is where I started to get a feel for how Chief Bobber performed in a tight turn. Now, I do want to mention that each version of Chief comes with power modes, including the none touchscreen variant. In simple terms, the power mode simply changed the throttle response. And at this point in the ride, I still had the bike in standard mode to get used to the throttle, so the response was still being held back versus going full crazy on the 116. And as you can hear, I'm quickly getting used to how far I can lean Chief over based on scraping the peg. And after this, we began to climb higher up towards Jerome. And the more I thought we were done climbing, the more mountaintops I saw we had left to conquer in front of me. But once we make it to Jerome, this is when it started to get interesting. So I put the bike in sport mode shortly before we got in town because of the few twisties we had beforehand. And I started to realize something I didn't like about this cheap barber setup. Now again, I had the Chief Barber set up with the 116 and the 8 inch mini apes. But as we climbed higher towards the town of Jerome, I found myself putting my weight on the bars more to hold on, especially considering the bike was in sport mode. And I wasn't able to comfortably use my core strength and legs to take the strain off my arms and my back. And I'm also doing this while I'm trying not to throttle myself out of the seat. And this put a bit of fatigue on me, especially considering how tight the roads were without much room for error. But this is not the Chief's fault. This is 100% a personal problem, but I want to note this considering my height at 5 feet 10 inches. But once we got to the top of this hill, I saw Blockhead to my left scrambling to put his Chief back in standard mode, simply because of how sensitive sport mode really is. But sport mode having a sensitive instant full on throttle is exactly how the engineers designed it to be. But once we got out of Jerome and back to more mountain passes and flat roads for the time being, the handlebars felt less of an issue. And at one point, I tried to view the ride command screen on the bobber, but I found it difficult because of the direct sunlight. Now, while this moment was brief, at this time, I found the screen to be unusable. And there wasn't damage, I just couldn't see it from the glare. And further up the road was our first lookout point, where not only did we stop for a breather, but we got ready for our first photo op. That was good shit, bro. Yeah, it was. It was good. That was awesome. Oh, Look, it's Daft Punk. Yeah. <laughs> Mountain stuff. Beautiful place to be right now. Hey, what's the temperature? Cold. Cold? Okay, the temperature's cold. Yeah. Very cold. Like mid 50s, maybe? Okay, but well, we're living, folks. We're living. Cold for me. I'll be off different. Good stuff. Once it was time for the first photo op, I geared up and Brad, a journalist from Jalapenic, told me to just look like a bandit. Huh? I said, just make sure you look like a badass. Oh, yeah. I don't do good at looking like a badass, so <laughs> hopefully this backpack makes me look cool like Keanu Reeves. I took that to heart and I made sure I put on a good show for the camera. But to my surprise, I was recommended by the Indian engineers to put the Chief Bobber back into standard mode as the throttle response could get a bit dicey on the curvy roads in sport mode. So I did that. I 
I then pushed Chief up the mountain, scraping the peg in the turn to give the best look I possibly could. But the whole time, I'm still thinking about how I'm still having to put my weight on the handlebars as I climb and, and throttle down on this mountain pass. But also, how the brakes actually do really well to stop this bike on just one rotor, even while I'm still attempting to build confidence and throwing this bike into curves. But on the last pass on this route, I had more confidence. I put the bike back into sport mode, and I just let it rip. And by this time, I had a bit more understanding of the route and how far I could push when I needed to. And again, you can hear as I scrape the peg on how aggressive I was attempting to ride this bike. And after this run, we continue up the mountain towards Prescott Valley, where it gets not only higher in elevation, but the temperatures begin to decline very fast. And the lead rider and I begin to get in this little groove as we climb the mountain, not only eventually seeing snow, but views on ridiculous views. And one wrong move, and you're either smashing into the mountain, <laughs> or hitting an oncoming car, or you're gonna fall off the mountainside. And with this groove that we had, I was thinking just how rigid and planted this chassis felt as I hit one twist after the next. And the one thing I haven't thought about at all yet is how firm the suspension is, but I am noticing how well it holds a line. I'm also noticing how cold it's getting, and my fingers are becoming more numb by the minute. But still, I'm pushing Chief more and more as I get comfortable with how it delivers his power and what it likes to do when it finds its place in the curve. But at this point, we begin to make the descent down Jerome where brakes play an even more critical factor to slow down the bike, especially under more momentum. But I dip Chief Barber into the curves and I power out. And again, I found the bike to stop just fine with me using one finger on the lever to apply pressure to the brake. It was that easy. We then exited Jerome to a more rough part of the road that involved testing the suspension and wind blasts even more. Before that, as you all know, each Chief variant comes standard with cruise control. I leaned on that feature a lot at this moment to give my numb fingers a rest. And after that, I deliberately tried to hit bumps to see how well Chief would handle these. And the bumps felt very firm from the three inches of travel that each Chief has, but it wasn't enough to bounce me off the seat. And I was okay with this. And later on, we were all starting to feel the pains at the stoplight from our hands being numb, including our friend Kirsten Madura from Women Riders Now. We eventually made our way from there to the town of Prescott, where we stopped for lunch at Raven Cafe. That was fun. Yeah. And cold. Cold for sure. All right, folks, we just did, how many miles was that, guys? I think like 150. Really? One million. One million miles in the mountains. It was cold. All of our hands were hurting for the most part. We had Some of us had rubber gloves under our gloves. But it was fun. So now we're going to grab a bite to eat. We're going to get back to it. And here we all talked about how cold it was as we all huddled around the propane heaters on top of this balcony and talked about what we experienced with Chief so far. Editing my own videos because I hired an editor because I'm doing like three videos a week and it gets hard to like do everything. Uh, Coffee. 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 I post two videos a week. Yes. But after a chilly but comforting lunch, we made our way back to the bikes and I had a tad bit different setup waiting for me. This time, it was the Chief 116 with a stage two setup. It also had the drag bars with the sissy bar passenger setup. The complete stage two setup involved the stage one air filter kit, the stage one exhaust, a bigger 60 millimeter throttle body with stock being 54 millimeters, three cams, and two high flow injectors. 
and after starting up this bike, I could immediately tell the difference in the idle and the lope of the motor. And I was super, super excited to ride the most responsive and performance-based Chief available for us to ride. Once we got out of Prescott City, we quickly started hitting twisty roads again. At this point, I'm way more confident with this Chief setup, especially in sport mode. We got back in that groove from earlier and started hitting these twisties and eventually found ourselves having to slow down to wait for the rest of the pack. But this whole time, I'm just in a mood of bliss from not only the surroundings, but how much fun I'm having with this 116. Seriously, y'all, I was really, really enjoying this Chief setup a lot. And we eventually poured over to our next photo op stop, taking in more views and myself acknowledging just how good this 116 Stage 2 is on this road. Fast road. That was pretty awesome. Okay. That was pretty awesome. And folks, we're at another stop doing more photo stuff, getting some a good ride up the mountain, and then we get our picture taken, and we come back down, and get our picture taken again. Do it just three times. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, but some good stuff. And eventually, I gear up for the second photo op, and this time, I wanted to know just how quick I could take Chief up this road. And with the stock Pirelli Night Dragons on each Chief variant, I start off with a quick rip up to the first turn. I start slowing it down just a little bit with nothing more than a bit of front brake along with some engine braking. Then I hit the front brakes with one finger again and a bit of trail braking for the rear. And at this point, the bike is still completely stable. I'm confident and I threw it in this curve with absolutely no effort. And then I rolled on the throttle to power out to the next curve. Then I power out more uphill for a brief elevation battle to hit a tight right-hander scraping even more peg. And then eventually I get to the photo spot with the photographer waiting on me at the top of the hill and I throw it down to the left hoping that I get more sparks to fly for a beautiful photo finish. And then I finish this round off with more sparks on the big right-hander. <laughs> and let me tell you, I, again, I was really feeling this setup so much more compared to the 8-inch Mini Apes. It felt like home for me and I was comfortable and I was confident that my abilities complemented what this bike could do. And the second time, I found myself grabbing even more peg and I was just more excited to take the setup back up and down this route versus getting the photos, which is what we were supposed to be doing. I genuinely was ready for more with this Chief. And even after we got stuck behind traffic after the second photo op, I was still enjoying this Chief a lot more. And again, it mostly comes back to comfort with the drag bar set up for my height, the four pegs, along with getting used to sport mode in this new chassis. I didn't have any issues with the stage one air filter kick sticking out on the side of the bike either, but it does make this bike look and ride so good. This air filter kick could though, however, be a problem for taller riders, but for me, it works perfectly for my height. But we descended more into warmer temperatures as the wind began to pick up more in the open landscape. Traffic was almost non-existent and we passed anybody that got in our way. 
And again, I'm confident, although by this time, I'm struggling to keep up with the wind blast with my body beginning to feel strain in the neck area. My lower body feels better in comparison considering this is the stock seat setup on the Chief. But the passenger seat setup I can say on this Chief did do a great job at giving me tailbone support. I eventually looked down at the ride command to notice the range till empty meter on the Chief saying 145 miles to empty. And as you all saw, we were ripping these bikes pretty good during the day. Each version of Chief has a four gallon tank, and I was personally impressed to see a 42 mile average per gallon. And it gave me confidence, I'm using that word a lot, it gave me confidence that we could get a good amount of miles on less tank capacity when not riding aggressively, although I know a lot of you express wanting at least a five gallon tank. And I'm saying this again, <laughs> but we descended another mountain after more aggressive riding. And before we got to the bottom, and this time we're actually at the bottom of the mountain, I promise, I noticed my chief had an engine light on the right side of the ride command cluster. Spoiler alert, it was something simple, but the bike didn't feel all for that it was riding any differently. I asked an engineer about this later and it had to do with the oxygen sensor throwing a code from the elevation changes. This eventually went away and I didn't see it again. But after we waited for the rest of the crew to catch up, I could see nothing but Chief and open road. And we powered off again to head to our next stop. And this period, we had more bumps on Chief, with these hitting a bit harder than previous along with a railroad track that caught me by surprise. And I can say I did feel some of these bumps firmly in my back. By this time, we're riding in mid 60 degree weather and we were ending the day on a high note as we began to see more hills and cacti on the Arizona landscapes. We made it to our final photo op before we called it a day at Vulture City Ghost Town. Uh, it's warmed up a little bit, and this is the last photo shoot before we get to the spot to start camping, but it's been a wonderful day, a lot of content, a lot of fun, a lot of learning about Chief and riding with some of the engineers um, from India Motorcycle, and <laughs> it's been a blast. It's been a blast. Oh, yeah. bike has been treating me very well, I must say. It is a lot of fun to throw in the turns. A lot of fun. And that grunt that it has is... Oh, that grunt. So good. How much pig left? You're scraping it, baby. And the sun went down below the mountain. got down to like 35, 43. And I was like, yo, this sucks. And I still have three hours left to go again. This is one of the engineers. He said this is his third set he's been through, but <laughs> he's been having a blast. Oh, yeah.
Now, once we made it to Vulture City, I started to realize one, sport mode was not the right power mode to be in on dirt. And two, we were in the middle of absolute nowhere. And even on dirt, Chief was stable and it actually made me want to spin the tire a bit even though I am not the rider for that. And this, yeah, this is Vulture City. Yurts, haunted old buildings and trees, and the mine shafts, each with their own twisted stories. It was windy, signaling the chilly night that was ahead of us. All right, guys, out there in an epic day of riding, we have to have somewhere to sleep. So I'm gonna show you, are, are these things called yurts? Yeah, or, I thought they were called like yurts. I don't know. Anyway, it looks like a giant tent. So let's show you what it looks like on the inside. Welcome to my crib, baby. This, oh, God almost fell. <laughs> All right, so there's my gear here's my nice chair i can sit outside of the yurt or tent or whatever it is I look outside i have a heater a lamp i have stuff to shower with and this nice comfy queen size bed i have a device to charge some of my devices and i have this nice harp shaped mirror yes but this is what i'm going to be sleeping in tonight after a long day of fun riding I can tell you guys that after traveling to get here and then today riding the chief through <laughs> up the mountain, down the mountain, in the cold, I can say that, uh, oh, I'm not in focus. I can say that it's been a very awesome time riding this bike and getting the experience of really riding chief and being able to finally give you guys a real review. So, you know, this is day one. It's coming to a close. About to camp and eat and fellowship with everybody. And then tomorrow we're gonna do it all over again. And it's gonna be a real good time. But yeah, there's a whole lot of nothing out here. And riding chief here for that reason is what it's all about. So yeah, good times. We all put chief to rest for the day. We all fellowshiped and played games. And Talk more about the ride we had and what the next day had in store. Home was here in these yurts, allowing us to sleep under the stars, even though it got down to 47 degrees that night. But that didn't matter. Chief brought us all together. That mattered, and it was enough. Hi, Jess. <laughs> the next morning, we all woke up and prepared for the next day of riding Chief. It was a chilly mid 40 degree morning. I woke up refreshed and felt the feeling of relief that I was outside in the middle of nowhere, riding motorcycles with new friends. It's a different feeling that I'm just not used to. Bag. It's been amazing on this entire trip, man. Like, I've had that bike on me all day yesterday. I know for every bit of probably five or six hours, and there's like no strain on my back right now. Outside of just general riding and wind pressure on me, but this backpack, <laughs> this backpack's pretty dope for all the stuff that I have in here and how it takes the weight off of me, so. Yeah, and it looks freaking good. I can't wait to see the pictures that they took of us, and I had this backpack on, I cannot. I can't wait. How was it last night? It was so cool, man. I slept great, too. 
I didn't sleep as good. <laughs> well, let me rephrase. I slept good, but then my heater went out and I had to refill it at 5 a.m. But Jess, you filled yours again at what? It was like 2.30 in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. So either way, it was fun. But Indian has been treating us really awesome out here. So we just had breakfast and now we're gonna gear up and get ready to uh, do day two of riding, so yeah. I was back on Chief with the 116 Stage 2, and the plan was to hit the same route we did the previous day. As we began to leave this time, I made sure to put the Chief in standard mode versus sport, and I just wanted to make sure I didn't have any surprises from this sensitive throttle. But once we were back on the main road, I changed it back to sport mode, and we were back off to the races. We hit one more photo op, which was, for me, a high speed run, allowing me to get Chief up to speed even more. And once again, at this point, my confidence was on full go. As we made our way back up the mountain towards Prescott National Forest, the lead rider and I were in full sync as we swept through these curves at a comfortable pace on Chief. And at this point, I'm so comfortable with the drag bars and the nimbleness on how this bike feels with this weight. I'm fully, again, confident that I can ride this bike at the pace it was designed for. I wanna make sure you guys know that. Eventually, at the top of the mountain, we stopped at this local restaurant spot. We took another breather and got ready for one of the most challenging and exciting things I've ever done on the bike. All right, everyone, we're at another, oh, tongue tied. All right. All right, everyone, we're at another stop and we just came up the mountain and now we're about to do this whole car lead. What, what, what do we call this, like lead car shots? Huh? Car to bike tracking shots. Yeah, car to bike tracking shots. And it's gonna be really cool. So we're about, about to go back down the mountain and get some really cool stuff. So yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. First, I had to ride back down the mountain and then it was time to follow this photographer for rolling shots on the bike. It is way easier said than done. And again, the whole point was for me to look like a badass. But these guys are professionals and I am not but I did my best to stay close to them as we went back up the mountain for some really awesome shots. 
and I did a money shot of scraping the peg around this bin to let the sparks fly in the photos. From here, I switched out to the Chief Barber with the 116 and the 5 inch mid risers. And once again, I leaned on the cruise control to allow me to put my hands on the motor for warmth, including allowing the hot hands we all put in our gloves to activate and give off more heat. It was cold. These mid riser bars for me felt, of course, more in between the drag bars and the 8 inch mini apes on the previous Chief Bobber. And I was okay with this setup. It's not as ideal to me as the drag bars are, but again, this is fully a personal choice, but I was overall comfortable. And at this point, I knew what these bikes could do, what they liked, and what they didn't. And eventually, we made our way back to the beginning of the ride from the previous day, and we got off on the Chiefs to reflect on two days of riding Indians latest and greatest. I personally wasn't done though. I still had unfinished business with Super Chief Limited. I did take it out for a quick spin down through Sedona, nothing crazy. You know, it had the 116, the floorboards, the cruiser bars with the better seat. And you'd think that this bike would be a grandpa like Jess said it would be, but it performed like grandpa still had his groove and he wanted you to know it. It had bite from the brakes and it felt nimble on his feet. It also had more than enough passing power, obviously with the 116. And it performs just like the other bikes considering all the parts from one chief will fit on the other chief. So if you have a chief barber, you can turn it into a super chief if you like. But my only complaint, and it's a big one, was the wind buffeting coming from under the tank. An easy fix for this are the soft lowers available from Indian, so consider that as a necessary accessory if you're interested in super chief. And that, my friends, is it. If you made it this far, that means you really wanted to know about these bikes. But overall, this was a pleasurable and memorable experience riding each of these different Indian Chief setups. And I enjoyed not only riding this bike despite the very minimal issues and nitpicks I had with them, but also sharing the experience with some of your favorite creators. And this event taught me a lot about not only how Chief was meant to be ridden, but also what I want more out of my own riding experiences going forward, bikes included. But I will have more to share with you all soon on Chief and how I overall feel about the bike outside of what I've already shown. But again, this was an event of a lifetime and I wanted to share just how it all went down. And again, I am incredibly grateful. All right guys, I am here wrapping up my time with the Chief. It's been a while, two days, but it's coming to a close. But I just want to say thank you to everybody that I've met along the way and thank you to Indian Motorcycle for getting me out here to test ride this bike in the environment that it was built for. And also, you know, thank you also for considering me to be here with big players like Blockhead Moto, um, Her Two Wheels, and then you got big journalists like Jalopnik and The Drive, like... <laughs> I'm a small person when it comes to them, so it's incredibly humbling and I'm very thankful to be able to be here and represent the smaller channels and just everybody that's out there grinding and you're waiting for your big break. Like My advice to you is to just keep going because I promise you, somebody is watching you and you just don't realize it. So keep perfecting what you're doing, keep being yourself and it's going to come. It came from me. So yeah, again, thank you to Indian Motorcycle. And uh, yeah, I'm wrapping up here until next time, guys. I'll see y'all in the next one. But as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't just let me know. Let Indian Motorcycle know down in the comments and what you'd like to see from us both together in the future. I'll catch y'all in the next one.